Yes. So this whatever you are seeing here is the actual overall structure of a virus, overall demonstration of a virus rather I should say because I am going to show you the structures. It looks quite distinct, quite there are very, very varieties of viruses, okay, which looks very different. Well, let's talk about the characteristic features. They are nucleoprotein. Nucleoprotein, what does this mean? This means they have nucleic acids and proteins. Yes, just nucleic acids and proteins. Fine, let's see. See, these are the nucleic acids and the nucleic acids can be DNA or RNA. Please take a note on this. I'm talking about the nucleic acids can be DNA or RNA and never ever both. Both DNA and RNA can never be the genome or the genetic material of these viruses. Fine, you have to know, understand this. Yes, contains infectious genetic material. Yes, the term, term infectious is very important because this DNA and RNA, they are really, really infectious. They have the capability to cause infections. Just these nucleic acids. Think about it. Right? Okay, great. Now, see, these are the capsids. Capsids, what are capsids? So the nucleic acid is covered by a protein coat. And that coat is called a capsid. This capsid helps in protecting, protection. It provides protection to the nucleic acids, okay, to the genetic material. So surrounded by the protein coat called capsid and each of these capsid, you see these dots, these are, are made up of the subun subunits called the capsomers, capsomeres. Fine. So what's the overall structure? It's nucleoprotein. Virus is nothing but the nucleoprotein, nucleic acids and proteins. Nucleic acids are present inside a protein coat, a protein, protein covering, right? And these protein covering are made up of small units, subunits called the capsomeres. Great, you understood this? It's simple. So these are the capsomeres. So nucleic acids, capsid and capsomeres. Now the very, very important point here is they are neither living nor non-living. Well, why? Because they exhibit both type of characteristic features. I'll show you. They exhibit both living and non-living type of characteristic features and often many people, many scientists refer to the viruses as virus particles because of this characteristic feature that they can act as living as well as non-living. In fact, you know what? When these viruses, they are outside a host organism. What do you mean by host organism? So basically, the viruses, they require a host cell to complete their life cycle. They require a host cell to complete their life cycle and inside the host, they behave as living organisms. They, they, they can do a few things. They can infect, they can cause infection, they can increase their number, they can reproduce. Yes. So those are characteristic features of the living organisms. But the interesting fact is when they are outside the host cell, then they are like dead. They are like particles. They don't, they don't do anything. They are incapable of doing anything. So they, they stay as non-living things, right? Okay. Hence, they are referred to as obligate parasites. That means to complete the life cycle, they require a host. They lack their own machinery to support their life. They lack their own machinery to support their life, to support their existence. They need a host cell, a host organism, rather I should say a host cell. These infects the cells. Host cell to complete their life cycle. That's the reason they are known as obligate parasites. Very important. You should understand this, these two points because that's the crux of these viruses. Fine? Great. Of course, they cause a lot of diseases, a lot of infections that we are going to talk about. So this was about the virus. So what are the important points? The nucleoprotein structure, nucleic acid outside the capsid, which is made up of capsomeres. They are neither living nor non-living. Obligate parasites. Fine. Okay. Let me talk about the living properties of the viruses. Why do we call them that? Why do we say, often refer, that they do have some living properties. Let's see. They contain genetic material, DNA or RNA. If you think about yourself, if you think about me, my cells also have the genetic material, which is what? The DNA, right? They, 
do have genetic material but the important part is it can be DNA or RNA but never both right so this is a characteristic feature like that of the living organisms these are the living this is a living property because DNA RNA rather nucleic acids are the living molecules surrounded by protein coat again proteins these are biomolecules which are found in the living organisms fine these undergo mutation mutation yes so I'll tell you one small small important fact because of this characteristic feature you know mutation it's very very difficult to synthesize or rather prepare antivirals fine because of the fact if today I'm preparing a vaccine against a virus tomorrow it doesn't work if today I'm preparing a medicine medicine that will act against a virus tomorrow it doesn't work you know why because they're mutating they're changing their structures they're changing their properties drastically right so viruses, viruses are really da dangerous because of this fact that they can mutate very fast fine they cause infections who can cause infections if it's not a living organism it has to be a living organism then only it can or rather then only it will have the ability to infect right so this word infection can be through the living organisms only so this is again a living property fine just i told you obligate parasites they need a living organism to complete their life cycle so it's again a property which is a living property okay now they reproduce they can reproduce in the living host reproduction is a property of living organism this is a living property so genetic material surrounded by protein coat undergoes mutation causes infections obligate parasites and can reproduce these suggest that the viruses can be referred to as the living organisms but now the problem is they have non-living properties too what are they let's see they are acellular they do not have cells they are not composed of cells whenever we talk about living organisms we talk about cells cells have to be there but they're acellular they're just the nucleic acids and the proteins then how will you call it them call them as living you can't right inert crystalline structure inert crystalline structure outside the host organism then nothing then nothing but some structure some particle so it's like a non-living thing also they lack enzyme system enzymes you know enzymes are biomolecules mostly proteinaceous which can catalyze a reaction which helps in a reaction process they do not have enzymes except some rare case, cases where some of the viruses they have some enzymes like the reverse transcriptase you can study about it you can do some research about it because that's a bit higher level topic which you don't require now but i'm just telling you so that you understand these facts really well so some of the viruses they have these enzyme called reverse transcriptase which can synthesize you know what which can synthesize dna from which can synthesize dna from the rna right it, actually in our cells in the living organisms what happens is from dna rna is synthesized but they because of the presence of the reverse transcriptase enzyme they can synthesize dna from rna but that's an enzyme but most of the viruses do not have them so they lack enzyme system except some of the exceptions so these are some of the properties which tells which suggests that they are non-living particles they are non-living so they have living properties as well as non-living properties hence we cannot classify them under any specific category we could not include them under the five kingdom system of classification right are you convinced now like why did rh we take or not consider to include viruses in any of the kingdoms or rather you would also not consider right because they do not have defined properties their properties which is both of the living as well as the non-living things